Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Pompey Cast. This is episode 7 now I believe. Obviously doing one every Thursday, even during lockdown we don't get much news. Today we've got Marquis, what he did midweek for Pompey Power, obviously up front, John Marquis. We've got some news about the Championship that's speculation again. We've got more news as well on the first restrictions that will be in place for football when it returns. Some news on training. Uh, we're going to discuss the best players in League One in our opinion. We're going to tell you what, what, what you can wear. You can watch the Bundesliga, what about it. And we're going to update what we said on our first ever podcast and talk about what we think would be best for League One and Two now. And obviously I'm joined again by my dad. How are you today? I'm too bad. Are you alright, mate? Yeah, I'm alright. Yeah, obviously we're still getting bored, uh, more bored, but... He's just uh, relaxed the lockdown a bit, so we're allowed out for more. But obviously, still, it's nice to stay alert, not stay at home. But still, stay home if you can. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll, we'll get straight onto it. And I read this week in Twitter, which I found amazing. I don't know if you've read about it yet. But John Marquis made it his duty to take on and help someone who was going through a difficult time mentally. The man, I think, went missing. His family were worried about him. And John Marquis tweeted out saying he wants to get in contact with him. And I've just read a tweet that's gone out about an hour ago that John Marquis phoned this man and it cheered the guy right up. And yeah, what, what do you think of John Marquis' actions there? You know, I think it's a great effort, yeah, a bit of uh, personal touch um, to give someone a bit of a lift in these um, dark times. So yeah, I think that's a great, great touch from uh, Mr. Marquis. Yeah, it definitely shows as well that he's. he's committed to what he's doing. He's not just there, oh, I'm a footballer, I want the money, I want this. He's actually involved. He, he wants to help out where he can. Mm, of course, he, yeah. Because there are a lot of footballers out there that'd be like, mm, who cares? I get money every week and I play football. But he's obviously come out and he's now like, well, yeah, to be honest, I'm going to help him. I'll take mm. it on, I'm going to help him. Yeah, that's a nice, nice touch. Yeah. Anyway, that, that, that's that. The, the bit of happy news for the week. Uh, and now we'll move on to some speculation again. We don't, we're not going to say, yeah, this is going to happen because at the minute, no one knows what's going to happen. But there's been news come out this week, or speculation come out this week, that the Championship might return before the Premier League. So the Championship would start playing their football behind closed doors before the Premier League do. What do you, what do you take on that? I think in terms of any league starting up, like we said before on these podcasts, I think in terms of any anything you know starting up, as long as it's safe to do so, as long as the clubs have got you know testing capacity that's not taken away from the NHS or... Um, People in like more extreme needs, I think it would be a good pick me up for the country, even if they can't even attend uh, matches, just to watch maybe on TV. Um, but obviously, once again, we're, it's all like it's a bit of speculation, isn't it? We, yeah. we, don't, we don't know exactly what's no going to happen. I think we we've obviously spoken about. I don't think any season's now going to be null and void. Whether that means. Well, it's not. It, I, yeah, I don't think they. Can I think that there's that. there's going to be promotion and relegation in, in every league. Um, that's not to say that every league's going to finish because I don't think it. That might not be the case, but then you're looking at other, like you say, Blake, other things like points per game and all that, all these sort of, in my opinion, ridiculous. I, I agree things. with you completely on that. Well, I think in terms of, if you can whether it's the Premier League, Championship League, One League Two, if you can finish the season and it's safe to do so, obviously behind closed doors, I think that's the best way to do it. Um, as I said, if it is safe, don't you reckon, mate? Yeah. Because obviously it gives teams a chance if they're fighting relegation, promotion, at least it gives them a chance to achieve or come at, get out of relegation or get promoted rather than have it done with nine games to go Take where you are, because let's be fair, especially in the league that Portsmouth are in, apart from commentary in the, at the top of the league, but apart from that, anyone could go up. Well, the only in gap the, is commentary's gap of five uh, points. Anyone, anyone down from commentary to about ninth or tenth place. Well, I'd say ninth is because Ipswich have fallen and fallen. Yeah, yeah, but anyone, like you said, anyone to about eighth or ninth place could really go up if they get on a run, if they get a bit of form. Yeah. Especially in that championship. I don't. Fair enough, Leeds and West Brom are the top two. I think Preston are, are still chasing that. Yeah, I, I think they're Fulham are still chasing. How far are they ahead, mate? Four or five points? So they're yeah, not well, massively I don't even ahead. think of that anymore. They're, yeah, so they're, they're not, they're they're not mass, massively, you know, in terms of... They're not like Liverpool. Yeah, <laughs> streets ahead. I mean, Liverpool are going to win the league if it was... Anyway, 
So, but in terms of the championship, nothing is like done and dusted that any team's that far ahead that they're gonna. Yeah. That they would have won it anyway. You can't. You can't say that for a. You can't even argue that. You, you can't say that for a guarantee. And I think it's the same across all. You know, all four top four divisions, including the Premier League Championship, like we're, we're actually talking about. I think I've just. You've gone on again. I've but gone on a bit, but. Gives gives you something to what listen to. But yeah. anyway, but the other thing is, if the Championship returns, surely something has to go on in League One because you can't bring back the Championship of the Premier League and then go, well, no one gets relegated. Yeah, I mean, it all. Because if they null and void League One. Yeah. Then no one goes down in the championship because you can't no, just no, say no, no, no. Well, they're going down, but no one's coming up. League, League one and two will not be null and voided. Yeah. They might be stopped and no more games played, but they won't be null and voided. Yeah. So there will be promotion, there will be relegation. Whether that's like I said before, whether that's done on points per game system or various other scenarios. Or first game. It... I mean, I don't agree with the situation where in our league we're fourth. Joint points with the team in third. And weighted Only two managers. points off Rotherham in second. Yeah, yeah, if it done on points per game, we'll slip to seventh. And we'll, we'll lose and we wouldn't be in the playoffs anyway. And Wickham would go to fourth. Because they no, did that's, that's on another. But there's all sorts of stuff. It's, I, I, it's weird. And the, Blake, this, this, the scenario that Blake's on about, there's no way that I agree with a team like Wickham, who are eighth at the moment, jump from eighth and suddenly get promoted. That's, that's just not. Because they had a good start. We're, we're good now. Yeah, I mean, we weren't good then, but we're good now. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that. At but all. anyway, before we get annoyed, we'll, we'll move yeah, on to, it's, it's, to the. I've got to, I'm going to have to go back onto this page now because I read something that was the the first restrictions that are going to be in place for the return of training, hmm. and there's four things that have been like thinged. Tackling is going to be banned. There's going to be no more than five in a group to train. What in training? Yeah. In training, yeah. Hmm. Pitches are going to be disinfected. And the sessions are going to have to be 75 minutes maximum. All the rules are there if you need to have a look at them. There's only four. Where's that from? What website is that from? BBC Sport. Mm. So, Rep- Reptable Site have said that. That, I think, well, that's for Premier League anyway. First phase of Premier League training. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what's going on with League One and any of that. But the main thing there that you've got to look at is tackling band. What are vendors going to do? Yeah, <laughs> you can't practice set pieces yeah, or anything, yeah. can you? Well, it's, it's just it, it basically means that the training is not going to be competitive. It's just going to be. So it's going to be like ball work, no contact, um, free kick practices. So if the Premier League ever does resume, if and when, they're, they're going to be in for a. It'll Shock. be a, 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 when they do start the games. If they do, they wouldn't have any. A, They'd be basically be training, no contact, nothing like. That. And then they'd be in straight to games like that, and then they'd be well, they wouldn't be prepared for it, would they? So we apologise that loud. He did just click right next to the microphone. Yeah, sorry. But but yeah, obviously as well. If there's no, t- I read something earlier. I don't know if this is just funny or whether it's true. It, it, mm. it's, I laughed at it. I'm not gonna lie. But apparently, when the prem does or doesn't resume, hopefully if it does, um, if your your tackles, you're meant to turn your head away from the player that's tackled you. I don't see how that can ever yeah, work I mean, in a million. Like you're gonna get tackled and then go whoop. That's yeah, I mean, think, that's never gonna. That's never gonna that's work. That's gonna injure someone. Um, things like that cannot be implemented. It, it, it just would not be able to happen. It's, it's the same as like players spitting and things like that. How can you? Everyone's human. You're on a football pitch. You'd... Yeah. Well, the pitch is disinfected. It'll help that in yeah, training. Yeah, but yeah, they can't yeah. disinfect a pitch every. No, week, I mean, they? I just I think it's a bit ridiculous. In the show. It's just. But that's my view. Yeah, before we get on to the best League One players, in our opinion, we're going to just quickly say Bundesliga. If you want to watch it, it's on BT Sport. So I think they're offering a monthly package for 25 quid if you don't if you don't have any football. So go on their website, have a look at that. We're not sponsored because we're such a small channel. But yeah, we, we, we haven't got any subscri- We haven't got any um, deals with BT Sport yet. Yeah, just a multi-million pound deal yet. No, not quite. No, not um, yet. But yeah, that's on BT Sport All Games. We'll be doing a predictions video that will come out tomorrow because this goes out Thursday. It'll come out tomorrow on the Friday. Mm. Hopefully, we'll get a few of them right. I'm not sure. But yeah, that's about that. Anyway, we'll get on to who we think are our best le- players in the league. Are. So I think we'll, we'll agree on the first one. Who, who, who do you reckon is the best player in League One? <coughs> the best player? Best, well, actually, should we just go through this in terms of not best player in each position, but best player in each division? So, like goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, attacker. Should you do that? Because that's a bit easier, isn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't... To be there's, there's a lot of good players in League One. Yeah, but who I mean, do you reckon the best goalkeeper is? I'm, I'm torn between two. 
I'm torn between Coventry's keeper, I can't remember his name, and oh. Peterborough's keeper. The cat's trying to make an appearance again. Yeah. Uh, Coventry's and Peterborough's keepers have been the two standouts for me. You reckon? Well, I think I, I think Alex Bash has done amazing for us. To be fair, he him, has thrown him into the conversation. Um, yeah, since yeah. he's coming, I think he's. I mean, especially the last away game he went to, Peterborough, we could have been beaten five or six in. Well, they headed from about two yards away. Yeah, I mean, we could, we could have been beaten five or six in. Um, but we could have also scored if it weren't for their keeper. Yeah, maybe. Obviously, oh, we would have lost, but we could have got a goal. Yeah, yeah. So, I, 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 but the, I reckon they're the two best keepers, Peterborough at, and Coventry. Yeah, you look at the team's fewest goals conceded, things like that. Obviously, Coventry top of the league, so they've got a pretty decent keeper. But you, he's, um, he's small, but I think he'll Sun pull off a top corner save at I moment. think Sunderland's keeper's pretty decent, McLaughlin as well. Yeah, he's uh, Throw him into keeper. the equation. Um, but, yeah, I, mean, we, I don't even know their names, so... Yeah, I, oh. well, I don't know the names of Coventry. You can Google it. Morosi, right? that's his name. Marco Morosi, Coventry's keeper. Can't remember who Peterborough's keeper is. Yeah, but, um, but that's who I reckon, two best in the league. Yeah. Um, Defensive-wise, who'd you go for defensively? See, that's another one that's kind of like last season, Matt Clark. Yeah. But now it's like you have loads of people that just... Burgess can be thrown into that equation. But he's an amazing Very season. easily, Burgess, you could just say, yeah. Yeah. He's scoring goals, he's stopping goals, he's doing everything yeah, we, he needs we, to do. We, we, talk, I mean, we, we obviously talk from a Paulson's point of view quite a lot, but um, I'd, I'd certainly... I think Burgess had an amazing season. Dabo. Uh, up to this point, yeah. Dabo decent. at Coventry, he's good. Even them um, ex-Pompey, Dan Butler, at Peterborough, scored against us, obviously, in that game. Yeah. He... Good player, not not gonna lie. There's a few defenders, obviously. Mm. To, to put Harry Souter, he's good as well from Fleetwood. There's a few defenders that I'd go. I want him on my team. I, want him, oh, I, want him I, team. I think Fleetwood are amazing. But, uh, oh yeah, for the team, for the money they've got, and the team they've got. I mean, for the considering get, I mean, yeah, they have got some financial backing, but for a team, every team does, don't they? Let's be honest. But for you a team it. that gets such a small club, amazing. I think they're uh, three, four thousand a week. To, to be fair, maximum. out of everyone. In that league, if I was to pick out a club, other than Pompey, other than Pompey that I like the most and I've got a lot of respect for, even though I don't like Joey Barton as a manager or as a person. I mean, he seemed all right when I met him last but, year. Yeah, but I can't. Amazing. We I mean, obviously know Ben Napper very well, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he might be watching this video. I don't know. But yeah, if you I, are Nappers, let us know. But yeah, Fleet, Fleetwood are. A, Seem to be always there or thereabouts. I know they didn't get in the playoffs last beating year. Beating us, we beat them. Yeah. They certainly. There or thereabouts once again this year. Cracking away day as well. Yeah, Quite a few right. fish, chop, fish and chip chops out there. Yeah, but yeah. Anyway, we'll move on. Midfield. So we're not going for wingers here. So before you even say Curtis, no, mm. he's a winger, he's an attacker. We're going to go centre mids. Who do you reckon is a centre in this division that can control play? They can be a lone player. So I've only said that because I want to throw McGee in there. I, I don't know many centre mids that can just pick what's up that, What's that guy that plays for a Peterborough in the centre of the park? I know who you're on about, but he's not. He's an attacker. Is he? He's not a set. You're on about no. the guy that played for Bristol City, aren't you? Mm. Number no. nine. Um, Maybe not him. <laughs> Smodix. Yeah, I think he's. Yeah, he, he plays up front or behind the striker. He's yeah. not. He's, I don't no. think he's a midfielder anyway. Very good player. Yeah, he's class. he's class. You can yeah. also make an argument for Jay Spearing in terms of where he's been in the past. Yeah. Because he's obviously played for Liverpool before. Now, not many people in League One can say that. Obviously, um, who have fleet we've got on midfield now? He was released from Stoke last year, I think. I can't remember his name. Let us know if you know who it is. Oh, there's a few. Like, once again, there's a lot of players that you can yeah, say. Well, well I, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say there's a standout player in centre midfield in the League One. There's a lot opinion. of different players. I mean, Tom Naylor's not good yeah. at the ball, but he'll just he'll yeah, hit you. I, mean, I would say, just... and we had Ben Thompson last year. He would have been my pick he would have if been. he was still here. He, I think he was... Even if he played for like yeah, he... Sunderland, he would have been my pick. That's a pick. <coughs> Max Power. Yeah, he's decent. Yeah. He's good. Anyway, we're, we're going to split attack up into two different dynamics here. We're yeah. going to go wingers and we're going to go strikers. Best wingers in the league, first of all. Curtis by a mile. You think Curtis is the best winger I'm in the league? I'm saying that. Curtis is... He's, he's very, very good. Yes. But... In terms of wingers... But I'm, going to dis I'm not going to disagree, but I'm going to say Curtis is definitely in the top five. However, he's inconsistent. Well, he's, yeah, right, fair enough. He started this season and he just didn't look the same. And right. last season as well, he started, he was on fire, he was on fire. January, nah, I can't mm. score anymore. Same with Jamal Lowe last season. Inconsistency. Yeah, maybe. He's a very, very talented winger, but he's inconsistent. Okay. Ben. You have to look at people that obviously, yeah, Dembele. I Dembele and Peter, 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 very good player. What a player. Speed, different Speed, class. Speed, skill, 
yeah, deliveries I mean, from corners. Right, so it? we're not going to talk about. I'd have Curtis on one wing, but this guy that we watched play for Peterborough. I mean, my God, he was just, but he was just skinning our defence the whole time. The ball's coming. He was miles away. He just yeah. made us look like Sunday League defenders. Different yeah. class. Um, you could make an argument with someone that's obviously gone out alone, uh, McGeady, Sunderland. At least last season, anyway, until he had a McDonald's. Yeah, him, yeah. him and Maguire are both good wingers at Sunderland. <coughs> I think who's that guy that plays up front for Fleetwood? Paddy. Paddy Madden. Perf. He's a striker, not a winger. Oh, you're on about forward line now, aren't we? No, but I said I'm going to spit Alright, okay. So I'll have Dembele definitely on. So you're, you want Dembele as well, Curtis? We'll probably do. I know Smith's doing this. He doesn't watch me. He's, he's too big. But Smith's doing this at the minute where he creates. Teams and you have to vote. For, so say you were in goal, you have to pick a keeper, and you're your opposite have to pick a keeper. Yeah, yeah. And whoever gets to go first picks him. And if you've already picked him, you've got to pick someone else. Yeah. We'll probably have a go at that yeah, but, for League One, not just a team. But mm. but yeah, that that's gonna be that's gonna be my wingers. Anyway, striker. Plus, there's only one striker in this division. He streaks ahead of everybody else. Ready? We'll say it on three. One, two, three. Ivan, Ivan Tony. Tony. <laughs> Different class. Miles better than everybody else. He's the best player in the league, in my opinion. Um, probably Blake's as well. Yeah. Um, he, if Peter, whatever happens this league, if Peter aren't in this, if Peter are in, are in League One next year, he, he won't, won't be there. He won't be in League One next Fact, year. Fact, he won't be there. Okay, where Peter Brown? He won't uh, be. There. He's different. He's great on the ball. He's got a great shot. Great um, header. Great, great header. He's, he's powerful. He's big. Quick. He's quick. He is literally the striker that you need if you want to go up. I mean, I've got we could never get him, but we went in for him, but we didn't. But, but they put like twenty million on his head. But yeah, he's 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 in a different league from League. But they've one. got two. Their attack. In my opinion, is the best attack in the league. Yeah, but then you again, look at they've got Dembele on the wing, they've got Schmodix in behind, they've got Tony up front, and they've got um, yeah, but they are inconsistent. Well. They can beat anyone four or five in the league, and then lose one now. But they could lose to anybody as like well Burton. at the same time. They don't lose so, one to Burton, but then but, beat Oxford five now. But in terms of actually, the be- if you were asking me the best player in the league, Ivan Tony's the best player in the league by quite some distance, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't just say no, he's not, because he's definitely. Yeah, yeah, he's just. Pace, I think power. if you ask any League One fan who their best player in the league is, one in every five or one in every four would say Ivan Tony. Yeah, I think it's it just a no-brainer at all, mate. He's, he's if you ask any Championship club, if they could sign a striker from League One, who would they say? Yeah, Ivan Tony. Yeah, I mean even Premier I don't, League. I don't clubs, think even, they could. Even like Bournemouth down. would probably take him. Yeah, I mean I think he's, Brighton would take him. Watford would take him. They yeah, just would. Yeah, he, I think he's got a lot of potential as well. He's, That's why FIFA gave him a team this season card. He's, he's yeah, just he's not ridiculous. He's not. Um, the Finnish Shark, either, but yeah, great player. Yeah, you could definitely get better. He's one of the players where you, you turn up at that away ground or you turn up at the home game against them and you're like, please don't be in there. Oh, yeah. he's playing. <laughs> definitely. And you just worry from that moment. Mm. Anyway, that's our that's our team. That, that's the kind of players we'd want. We'd want even though we don't know a lot of the names, we need to do our research a bit better. We, we probably do. When we do that video next time, we'll be To be fair, we, we, go, we go and watch these teams away, Pompey away all the time. <coughs> Pardon me, but we only... um. We're watching Pompey, aren't we? So I'm not really I concentrating really, on really the other team. Attention. I'm not really paying attention. I mean, obviously, know all the big players in the league. Um, the ones you've got to worry about. Ones got, but I'm not really. Or if they score a hat trick. I'm watching that. I'm always watching, you know, Portsmouth. Or I'm watching for players that, I mean, could be for Pompey. Right, yeah. Even that guy that plays for Rochdale at right back, Luke Matheson, is it? That Wolf signed. He's good and he's yeah. like 16. Yeah. He's a good player. And he, yeah. Well, the two wing, the two fullbacks that have is. Um, I thought Bolton had a few good players when we played them as well. For, a few young players as well, yeah. yeah. Anyway, now we're going to just finish off the podcast by talking about, because we said this in the first episode, we were talking about what we think should happen for League One and Two. So we're going to finish the seventh episode by updating that, obviously, and talking about what do you reckon you'd think would be best for League One and Two now, having with all the updated government guidelines and everything else? Yeah, I think we're, we're still in a... Everything's a bit up in the air. I think there's something to come back so they can return the train on the 25th of May, is that right? Yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, we should have mentioned that earlier, but yeah, yeah sorry, allowed sorry. to train 25th. Um, then you hear rumours to saying that the season's going to be, like there'll be no more games and they're going to do various points per game system. I think in the perfect world, if everyone, if it could be proven that everyone could be safe, um, all the tests could be t- taking place. There could be like various... The cats and the whip again. You know the right medical systems and things around the grounds. Testing kits are made yeah, yeah. widely available. Obviously, there not there wouldn't be any fans, but in terms of everyone that could, all the people that would have to be there, including the players, could safely be there. Would could safely be there. That would be the best way for me, in my opinion, to finish it. But that's all ifs and buts because we don't know. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, I, don't, I don't agree with points per game. There's I lots of hate things. weighted points per game. Uh, there's lots of things I don't agree with about that. I mean, like Blake says, it's one of the scenarios that... <coughs> I mean, Wickham could go from eighth and get promoted, which I don't agree with. Um, the problem I see is I've got no problem with Coventry going up because they're... They're a class above. They're not Maybe not class, but they're that far... They're, they're a certain... That many points... That, I mean, we're fourth. We're on the same amount of points as Oxford. Two points behind Rotherham. Did you hear what Rotherham's chairman said the midweek? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, went, he, he, he said, I think, he went, I think we should promote Coventry, Rotherham and Oxford. And everyone just went, well, really? You're yeah, the, he's got the Rotherham owner. You're going to yeah, say yeah, you're yeah. on Rotherham. So there's, lot, that, there's yeah. lots of... Ifs. I mean, I, Whatever happens, there's going to be legal action. Because yeah, Peterborough's chairman's threatened it already. Because yeah. he's saying that, come on, we've still got games to go. We could still push for promotion. Why... If it yeah, I mean, I, I, it's still. I mean, obviously, you're getting to the point now where there's there's going to have to be a decision going to be made in the next probably week. in the next week because we're going to be. It's not that long. We're going to be in June. Um, so when the you, Euro should have been. Yeah. Sorry so, to make you more upset. But yeah, when the Euro so, should have been. So you, you're limiting the time the time scale. I mean, so I hope, there'll have to be some sort of decision made in the next week, and then we'll, we'll have to see and go from there. Um, in yeah. terms of, I think we were good enough to go up. Would we have survived in the championship? No. Well, I say no, but with the team we've got, no. But if if Eisner, if Michael Eisner and the Twilight yeah. Company have come in and gone, here's some money. Yeah, but you don't know. I mean, it's, it's all. That's all. You spe- can never predict what happens. Well, I, I don't agree with some of the things that I'm hearing that could be decided to yes. to end the, end However, the season. I've said this from the beginning of COVID nineteen and coronavirus. I said I said this in the beginning. The press does not help. It doesn't. Mm. And that's the same for sport. You, you'll hear every day, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Yeah. And people believe it. And then they tweet it. And yeah. then people read the tweets and then retweet it. And then it just goes around I the think, world. And everyone goes, oh, that's going to happen now. Obviously, so there's shut other, up. There's up. There is other things that are a lot more important than football at the moment. Lives. Uh, people's lives. People's, you know, which, which is a lot people's more. People's livelihoods. Livelihoods. Every, like you say, Blake. So everything, everything, you know, the world's going to be a very different place when this is all finished. It's a very different place now. Um, and obviously, like me and me and the boy miss football a lot. Why do you call me the boy? I mean, I'm a boy. I'm I'm the boy. Apparently, no, I, they don't have a name. Sorry, Just Blake. The boy. Sorry, Blake. But, um, Thank you. I have a name again now. <laughs> yes, you have. Me and the man. The man. The old man. But yeah. It's <laughs> the old man. But yeah, we'll have to. Um, We'll have to wait and see, but yeah, well, we're definitely. We're, I think he's. We're gonna plan and try and do a crossbar challenge video tomorrow, or something like that. Even though his knee's gone a bit dodgy. Yeah. Bundesliga video is gonna go out tomorrow. Predictions. Yeah. Reactions to that will go out next week. Yeah, definitely. That'll have to do, be done on video call because it's early, early next week. I have to put that out. Mm. But once again, let me know what you want to see in the comments. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Have you got any shout outs this week before I finish the video? Have you got any? I don't think I have. Right, I'll have a shout out for Rick Ford. Hope you keep him safe, mate. Miss you a lot. Um, miss the bus journeys uh, away. Funny bus journeys, yeah. Um, Actually, yes. Shout out to Lewis Hayden for not waking up during the day. I swear you're turning into an owl and going nocturnal, yeah. mate. But you know, <coughs> I don't think you're going to be awake for this video. But you'll, well, be, you'll be awake in about twelve hours because we're filming this at about half half five. So you'll be awake about half one. Yeah, that's Blake's mate. Plays Xbox all night. Yeah. Um, no, he plays it. He plays it during the blooming morning. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes to bed again. Well, uh, a little shout out, Ryan Fisher, mate. Um, are you keeping safe? You have to come on a bike ride with me and Blake one day. Um, well, this is this is I'm all going still going on now, apparently. Um, Matt Vaughan. Once again. Fair play to you, mate. Um, right, we know it's just cut, and we know it's the the, the video. Something happened there. It, it ended short. We were doing our shout outs, but we've done them now anyway. Um. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you want to get involved. You can even just send in messages and we'll, we'll read them out. Yeah. Uh, shout out to anyone that's still on the front line. And most importantly, well, not most importantly yet. One minute. How many likes can we get? We'll go for 25 this week. 20, 25 this week. Down from last week, but we, had, we, we, we haven't did, hit we that in a long time. Yeah, we didn't post that till quite late. We were going to yeah. do it in the garden, but it's too cold. So hopefully when yeah, we do it next week, windy. the weather will be warmer, we do it in the garden again. Yeah. Anyway, we'll have our Bundesliga videos out soon. We'll uh, let us know what Bundesliga team you're going to be supporting as well. 
because I know I think I'm going to be supporting Dortmund because I know a couple of Dortmund fans. Yeah. So that that's my German team for the, for this week. It would be Joyceberg, but they're not playing because obviously twins are Pompey. They're not playing. So anyway, most importantly, stay alert now, stay safe, and out the blues. Out the blues.